Hi everybody, David here from Via Render. Thanks for taking the time to check out the short video. Um, slightly different video today. Um, I'm recording this in response to a question that I got on YouTube regarding um, really setting up rugs within D5. And so what we wanna do is take a look at a couple of the different ways that you can actually go about setting up different rugs in D5. Um, all right, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in SketchUp. And there's a couple of things to be mindful of in SketchUp. There's sort of some good news and some bad news. Um, the first thing is that, well, you've got a lot of choices. If we go to the warehouse, and this is where you're going to get an awful lot of rugs from, and just type in rug, you're actually going to get a huge amount of options. And there's some really, really nice textured models that you can actually use from the warehouse. There's also some really fantastic catalogs and some really nice collections. You've also got a huge variety of types, uh, textures, patterns, um, really a whole lot of potential options. Now, the problem with this is if we take a look at this over in D5, you'll actually notice um, there's kind of a few problems here. Here we are back in D5, and the first thing I wanna concentrate on is just this one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just select all of my SketchUp content. By the way, you can unlock uh, content. In other words, if you send stuff from SketchUp or Blender or 3D Studio Max or Rhino or whatever, um, if you go over here and just unlock it, you can actually then move this around. Now this origin, um, effectively, it's going to be the same sort of location of content and you can't adjust content individually, but it allows you to actually move stuff around in terms of like structurally, you can just move things from A to B. Okay, so back to the question of rugs. Um, you can kind of see here that the rug that we just brought over, um, it's, it's pretty, I mean, okay, it's not great. Um, it does respond to light because by default, if we go ahead and select it, um, D5 does, I think, generate normal maps by default based on the color map, which is this little guy right here. And so, yeah, it's, it's going to look like a material with a normal map, and that's sort of it. You can, of course, go back to SketchUp and make changes to this. You could go ahead and apply different textures. Really, though, these are flat, diffuse textures. Um, that's kind of it. That's sort of as much as you can do with it right there. Now, there are, uh, we should say, well, there is one other thing you can potentially do. If we go back to the warehouse and we get a little bit more selective about the content that we're actually searching for, um, so if we go ahead and like crank up the poly count, a lot of the default rugs are pretty low. They're almost as low in polygons as you could potentially get. Um, but if you actually go ahead and crank this up, yeah, you can get some really, really nice stuff. Actually, this stuff from Wayfair.com, a little plug for Wayfair there, uh, is really, really good. Now, there is sort of a, nope, there is a bit of a problem with this too. If we click on it, the poly count is just, it's effectively like this is exponentially higher polycon count just to get more detail in there. But you can see this model from back here, like it looks okay. If we go to D5 and actually take a look at it, like that does actually look better. And it looks better for a simple reason. Um, even though you're not getting all the fabric and sort of geometry effect, you don't have basically the, the sort of spines of geometry you're still getting a more complicated looking model. And generally a more complicated model is sort of more representative of real things. This rug just looks more real than this one over here. And as such, it's a better choice. You can still go in, make adjustments. You can go in and tweak the normal. Again, that is a sort of procedurally generated normal. You could probably, uh, you know, let's see, you probably go ahead and just, I'm just gonna apply this black and white image here. You could apply your own roughness map as well if you wanted to, which would sort of vary um, really the, the sort of shininess or reflectivity of certain areas. Um, you could potentially go ahead 
and put a displacement map on this. You will, if you do that, need to load up your own manual sort of uh, normal map. I'm just gonna just grab a random normal map here and just throw it in and kind of crank it up to one. And then you could add your own height map. Um, really though, the, the, the issue is that you just run into problems with using models from SketchUp. Ultimately, what you effectively gain in accessibility, in choice, in ease of use, you do limit yourself in terms of model complexity and ability to apply PBR maps. The SketchUp maps are just old, old style, flat images. Um, I'm not really sure you'd even really call them like diffuse maps or albedo. Um, they're just, just flat images. Okay, so that's it from the SketchUp side. Um, let's jump over into Blender. Okay, so with SketchUp out of the way, let's go ahead and just take a quick look at Blender and just see what we can actually do with that. So here we are in my default Blender scene and you'll notice I've actually got two different rugs here. These are both iMesh models. I've done a whole video thing on those already, so I'm not gonna get into that, but um, you'll notice one is a more sort of traditional flat looking rug. And then the second one is going to be an actual fuzzy rug material. And this is, uh, we'll talk about these in a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and bounce over to D5 really quickly. Um, I'm going to hit create a new link model, say yes. Okay. And let us just kind of, this will take a second. And let me just zoom out here a little bit. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the blender scene. What we'll actually do is we can probably just go ahead and just uh, turn that off and here we go. Now, all right, so this is the one of the rugs that came over from iMesh. The, a lot of the materials didn't really translate um, properly. The base color map kind of did, which is really nice and the roughness did, but that's pretty much it. Um, I don't necessarily think this looks really any better in its current state than the ones from SketchUp. Um, I'm going to go talk about materials in a second, and that will actually help with this quite a bit. But if we take a look here at this one, this is the kind of fuzzy uh, rug material. And you can see, like, there is kind of a world of difference. If we look at kind of the flat, kind of sort of, sort of more basic looking rug, and then if we actually look at the sort of furry one, and, and this is effectively what a lot of the people, I think, who want this rug material, um, this is sort of what they actually are looking for. Uh, I'm gonna go back to Blender, just select this, hit S on my keyboard, and just kind of scale this up. So they're kind of overlapping. Go back to D5 and just hit the live sync there. And okay. So I'm gonna just uncheck this and let's just try that one more time. Stop sync and I'll try that again. Um, really, you know, the people who are looking for kind of rugs to use, you know, like interior designers or people looking to just soften up or break up a space or just as a decorative thing. Um, this, is, this is really the one that you're actually looking for. Okay. There are some issues here, um, and I, I don't know how this model was kind of made. I, I never did a huge amount, um, even back in the day with like fur or, you know, that sort of procedural hair stuff. Um, but I'm gonna click on this and you can see we've got options for things like the base color map, normal, specular and roughness and all of that comes in. Um, you can go ahead and you can just, you know, adjust the base color so you could go in here and you could maybe make this kind of like a teal looking rug um this this model in particular has actually got two kind of interconnected pieces so i can go ahead and just do something similar for this um you know just kind of make it a little bit different um it doesn't really matter it, it's it just looks better um even if we were to just go to the assets and i'll come back to these carpets here in a second and we were just to be like hey i need um you know, I just need I just need a rug that sits under some furniture. Um, you know, this this is probably kind of like the way to go. Let's just for some we'll just grab this chair, this really nice uh, fabric leisure chair here, and I'm just going to go ahead and place that down. 
And yeah, no, does it look perfect? No. But would this potentially work just if, you know, if it wasn't green um, as just the backdrop or just as a, as a piece of furniture in, in your shot? Yeah, you, you could probably get away with this if the camera is not really focused up close. But if it's just in a room and you kind of look at that just right there, yeah, you, again, ignoring the green grass, um, yeah, you could you could just totally get away with this. I, I think this is probably the way to go in terms of bringing in a rogue model. Go for something like this. Um, you know, looking at the face count here, it's, what are we at? Um, do, 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 do. Uh, over 3 million. Um, and most, you know, a lot of that might even be coming, some of that is going to come from the chair. Um, just because, you know, the D5 Vasa models, you know, they are really, really quality, but they are high poly. Um, you know, I, I think this is, this is absolutely the way to go. Now, there's one other thing that I do want to talk about, which is the D5 assets and what can be done with those. And then just how we can bring in our own materials. All right. Um, all right. We'll be right back. Okay. So the next thing we want to look at is the actual D5 rug assets. If we go up to assets and we search model for rug, you, um, well, you get nothing. So what you need to do is just C-A-R-P-E-T, put in carpet. And we've got pretty much two at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and download this one as well. And there we go. And just go ahead and place this in our shot. Okay, there we go. So we've got like two basic roads. Um, or as Z5 calls them, two basic carpets. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we can actually do here. Um, the first is obviously, you know, simply we can scale it up and down. You can also go into the size tab here, turn off the sort of uniform scaling, and you can kind of tweak this if you wanted it to be more square, you could absolutely do that. Obviously, um, you're not gonna be able to convert this into a circle. So the idea of like these sort of spherical rugs, um, not really something we can do. Again, just bring in one from SketchUp maybe, or grab one from, you know, the Blender Market or, you know, whatever your 3D program is. Now, you may also be wondering, um, you know, I kind of like this rug-ish, but I wanna make changes to it. And can I do something else with this? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this rug material here. And you'll notice we are actually in the material template cloth. Um, this is, uh, I think they added this in, I'm gonna say maybe maybe version two, maybe 2.2. Um, the, to the best of my knowledge, the only thing that kind of makes this a cloth material is the opacity map, which you can add to, to make your cloth see-through, which would be really useful for like, curtains and things like that, drapery, folds, but really just uh, curtains, translucent, fabric-y materials, um, or just, you know, something that, that is kind of like fabric-y and loose, like even clothing, really light clothing or sheer clothing, you'd have an opacity map to sort of show light going through it. It would effectively be translucent. Um, the other thing that's there is also this fall off. Um, the fall off adds kind of this white shimmer effect is the best way I can think to describe it. Um, generally kept to pretty low values and I, I think is affected by the camera angle. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think it's affected by the camera angle too. Um, I think you really only notice it on curved surfaces, like something that has folds in it. So you're not gonna notice it a huge amount on the actual carpet. One other thing on this model is this thing, this sort of, um, I don't even know what this is called, this part of the carpet. Um, the, this is on, I think, both of these right here, and, and it may not like be your thing. You may just be like, I don't want this weird little like kind of fluffy edge. Um, one thing you could actually do is go ahead and just grab an opacity map. Um, even just in like an, I'm just gonna grab an all black image here and you can kind of see what it does. Um, you'd probably want to use just a completely black image. Um, when I did this earlier, I didn't get these weird, like kind of bouncy bits that are happening. 
Um, and I'm sure it could just be like, you know, it could just be whatever the, the image that I'm actually using here. Um, you can kind of see it's trying to read it a little bit. If you just put in like completely black square JPEG, you should have really no problem just, just getting rid of that stuff at all. Um, I don't know if this will show up in the render, but in the test I did earlier, you just put a black square right here and that should be absolutely fine. Um, it should completely get rid of that. Okay, this brings us then to, if you do wanna go ahead and set up some materials. I'm gonna go back to Blender. Um, I'm gonna move this guy out of the way, just hit refresh and go back to D5. This might take a split second. Okay, so I wanna talk about how to go about just setting up your materials for a effectively a cloth-esque material. Um, again, you're not going to have all of the sort of weave and sort of uh, sort of that, that, you know, fuzzy geometry effect without actually having that geometry there. But if we just wanna set up a basic cloth texture, I'll run through that. And then I wanna just talk about, um, you know, basically what you can do if you don't have maybe a material that you can just pull on and maybe you've just got maybe just a basic texture map. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we can do here. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this and I'm gonna go base color map and I've pulled up one from the Megascans library. Go ahead and just place in my base color map and the base color is set to white and the base color is, that's fine, that's all good. Might go ahead and make it a little bit more there. All right, looks fine. We're gonna go ahead and just move on from base color to normal. Go ahead and just throw in the normal map there. I'm gonna crank that up as high as possible. I am gonna go ahead and make sure that this is set to linear. And after that, that should all be fine. We're going to just go to ignore the specular roughness. I'm gonna plug the roughness in, um, which will be this one right here. And then what I'm actually gonna do is just completely ignore the fact that this is a cloth material. And I'm just going to change this to displacement. Okay, main thing is that we have a normal map plugged into the normal map slot, otherwise your height map isn't gonna work. And I'm gonna go ahead and just plug in, we should have, okay, if we don't have a height map, what we can actually kind of do is, Let's get just temporarily just shove the AO in there. Just, there we go. Just for that distortion effect. And that, okay, it doesn't look great, but like it'll it'll do. You can kind of see if, if light kind of, you know, hits it from different angles. It, it does actually kind of, it'll, it'll work. You can see the stippling there. Just enough to effectively break up the surface. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we wanna make sure the normal is cranked to full and that the height is also cranked to full as well. You're getting some bending around the edges, but you know, if you had like a, a, a base color map that had a specific texture, let's go ahead and just maybe load up one. I'm gonna to go to my desktop and just apply this rug texture here. Um, you can kind of see, it, it is kind of a little bit messy, not really perfect. That's due to the height, basically. So if we just put this down just ever so slightly, so you're getting distortion on the outer edge, but not massively on the inside. And then we can go ahead and just crank up the roughness a little bit. And that should all in all give you a nice enough result. So if we go ahead and just pan our camera. Yeah, I mean, I think that will, that will work for the most part. Um, is it perfect? No, but when you when you have the light kind of coming down from there, you do sort of get, it is full, like fake displacement at the moment, but it, it should work. Okay, all right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just load up our unhide. This is the D5 rug. And I'm actually, let me just go ahead and work on this one over here. Okay, if you do not have normal maps, uh, roughness maps, specular maps, all, all, all that good stuff. Um, well, there is something we can kind of do about that. All right. Um, let me jump into the next section. Okay, so we want to talk about how you can sort of create your own materials. Um, and again, we're talking about like if you don't have access to Substance Painter or you don't have access to 
really any of those sort of PBR texturing tools. I'm using this, uh, the default Indian rug again, and I think it's just a kind of really nice model. And I've just gone ahead and just left their chair over here. Okay, so say you go online and you do a Google image search and you find a nice image that you want to use. Um, you can obviously right click and save it. You can also use the Google, I'm sorry, the Windows snipping tool. Um, the snipping tool is a default tool that comes with Windows. I, I think they are trying to phase it out. I don't know how much longer it's going to be there, but you can just search in your taskbar uh, for snipping and or snip or something like that, and, and it will it will pop up. And you can just sort of almost like a screen grab and using just the new snip button and then just save. Um, I know there's a keyboard shortcut for this, like F11 or something like that, but if you just want to be able to go in there and like sort of crop out things. Now, you'll notice this texture is really nice and um, I got this from online. So if you own this rug, uh, please don't sue me. Um, and, and it's not perfect because it's not in the right proportions. So what you can do is go ahead and just bring it into Photoshop. And what I ended up doing was just going image, image size, go ahead and type in uh, 2048. And I'm gonna just make sure that these are kind of, uh, actually we can leave this linked so that we type in 2048, 20, let's turn that off, and 2048. And I, we talked about this in one of the previous videos about this preserve details too. This is sort of uh, Adobe's, I believe, newer AI upscaling and downscaling sort of software. So you can go ahead and just leave preserve details 2.0, click okay, and you'll get a pretty nice image. You can then go ahead and just save this. And that will give you the, for the most part, a diffuse texture. Um, you do want to make sure that there are no shadows or weird highlights. It, it is just an albedo. Now, this one, I think you can kind of see there is that texture kind of grain going on in there. So, you know, technically this is more of a diffuse map than a full albedo. You could go in and, you know, do a levels adjustment and all that kind of stuff to clean it up, but whatever. Um, once you're done, go ahead and save it. And then the next thing you will need to do is a Google image search, or I'm sorry, just a Google search for this software here, materialize from boundingboxsoftware.com. Um, so this is um, a way to create um, texture maps from image maps. So go ahead and download it. I think it's perfectly safe. I've downloaded this probably on like, at this point, four different PCs and I've never run into any issue. I think it's it's quite legit. Um, if you prefer, there's um, the github.com, you can go there. Uh, I don't know how to use that. So just go ahead and download it. Okay, and what will happen is you can go mat uh, materialize.exe and hopefully you won't run into an issue like I did. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and just load this up from my stored folder. So I've got an assets folder and I'm just gonna go ahead and load it up here. All right, there we go. Materialize image to material tool. All right, and you can see we've got um, a kind of a bit of a blank slate right now. I think, yeah, I think my, um, my camera may be struggling a little bit here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause and just turn off the video um, and that should fix a bit of the lag. All right, give me one second. Okay, so here we are in Materialize, and yeah, there we go. We've got a little bit of a smoother operation. So um, I, I'm not gonna say I know everything about the software. Um, I've used it off and on for the last four or five years at this point. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the diffuse map up here, and I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this, this little O, and I'm gonna go to, just go to my desktop really quickly and where I've got, uh, can I get this rug texture? And I'm just gonna select that. And there we go, it's coming in on the square. And again, this should be the one that we saved as 2048 by 2048. And you can see I do have a bit of a seam around the edges. I can go to, um, 
there's an option to change this uh, somewhere, uh, to change this from a basically this cube to an actual plane or something similar to that, but it's okay, we'll just leave it as is for now. Okay, I can't generate the rest of these maps just yet, but if I go over here to the left where it says height map, you can see now I have the option to create one from the diffuse map. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create. And you can see we get this really nice little preview that will show you kind of, um, sort of like the what your your height map is gonna look like. And remember height and displacement are effectively the same thing. You can adjust that with the height reveal slider. And just go ahead and leave it at maybe two thirds. And then you can go in and adjust some of really just the, the details. Um, try and kind of maybe crank up some of the fine details, which will hopefully help with the displacement effect. And again, you know, this is, this is not real, sort of displacement per se, we're just sort of faking it with this height map. Okay, so I think that looks that looks pretty good. Um, I haven't gone through all of these settings. I, I don't, you know, I haven't spent a huge amount of time working with all these settings, but that should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and click set as height map. And then the, the normal map, we can also create that as well. And you can see here, we can go in and we can just sort of start tweaking these settings. Uh, I'm trying to get this normal map kind of as sharp as we could possibly get it. And again, just, just adjusting these, the high frequency, uh, especially with a 2048, it'd be nice to get kind of more detail in there. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Set as normal map. Metallic map, I'm just gonna create it. It's, I mean, you know, really this whole thing should just be, uh, I mean, it's non-metallic, so I think it should just be all black if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead and hit um, set as metallic. Um, I'd probably actually just change this out, doesn't really matter. And then after that, just an AO, the M inclusion map, if we want that as well. And again, I'm just, you can go in and just kind of tweak these settings to your heart's content and just try and find something that you kind of like quite a bit. Um, let's put the AO map there, set as AO map. Okay, and once you're kind of done with that, um, I'm gonna flip the normal, um, which will affect the Y on the normal map here. That's pretty much it. Just go ahead and save project and we'll see how that looks in D5. All right, everyone, almost done. We are back in D5. We've exported our maps from Materialize. And again, we're using the default. Uh, this is the Indian rug from D5. I'm gonna go ahead and hit I on the keyboard. Um, use the eyedropper. And let's go, I'm gonna go ahead and just change this to displacement. And let's put the stretch down to, let's put that down to, um, let's just see, we'll probably have to, we'll probably have to kind of tweak this quite a bit here. Just trying to get the stretch to work where, yeah, I, I can kind of live with, let's put it at about two and we'll just see, um, two or three, and we'll just see how that works. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and change the base color. I'm gonna go to my desktop and you can see I've got my rug texture and I'll load up my normal. And I, I'm not paying a huge amount of attention to this. I'm, I'm literally just like crashing these in here. Um, let's see the height and metallic. I'm just, I don't even actually have metallic. I'll, I'll get a metallic from one of the other things and just place it in it. Technically speaking, um, objects are either metallic or they're not, so we can probably get away with just leaving that off. And again, the AO, I'm just uh, gonna shove that there. And then the height, I'm going to just put that there. Okay, um, all right. So with the normal intact, I'm gonna go ahead and just adjust the height settings a little bit. Now, obviously the map that I created was like super sort of janky and not accurate. So I'm not gonna crank the height all the way up. Um, I'm just gonna try and put this on a little bit just so you're getting a little bit of that displacement effect. Now it is quite specular. Um, I, th I think with this, I'm gonna just turn down the specular to like super low. But, you know, not too, not too bad, actually. Um, set the color to sRGB, set the normal, I think, yeah, it should be on linear. Everything else is fine. Roughness, I think, is also should be on linear. And AO is also should be set to sRGB. And then the height, um, I think, linear as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that looks all in all not bad. I mean, if we look down at this, it, it, yeah, it, I mean, it is a it is a rug material. You could definitely go in here and maybe adjust the stretch value. Um, I probably maybe have a uh, maybe 
too high. Let's put it 0 0.5 and just see. Okay, probably one. All right, and just you know, keep tweaking these values. If there's a bit of tiling in a rug, I, I don't think it matters a huge amount. Um, you know, you could get very finicky about this, but you know, for what we're doing, which is sort of very quickly, sort of a just grabbing images online and putting them onto the rug, I think this looks pretty good. No, you don't get the sheen effect that comes with cloth, but I, I think all in all for our purposes, that's good enough. At the end of the day, if we still had our preference, the rug that we had earlier, which is going to be this one here, um, this is still, I think, the way to go. Go ahead and, you know, you're not going to get all of the color variations. I don't think that's really possible here, but I do think this is still the better looking surface as long as you're okay with a limited color palette. But if you've got to make your own, I think this is the workflow to, to, uh, to follow. Okay, that went on a lot longer than I intended. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Um, all right, bye.